Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing homogeneous systems and parametric forms. So let us get started. In the previous sessions, we've already discussed the importance of the equation Ax equals b when we were discussing matrices in details. And in this session, we will be understanding why homogeneous systems are of importance. So a quick overview in understanding why homogeneous systems are important is in the use case of, let's say, if I have to predict Prop, uh, if I have to understand the relationship between how certain columns in my data science entries are important or I'm making some prediction. Say for instance, if I had to predict the value of a property in next, let's say in next 10 years. So value of a property in next 10 years or so and the column entries are area in square feet, number of rooms, <coughs> number of rooms, um, amenities and things like that. Well, technically amenities won't, yeah, let's say this is again some number based value. So amenities, for instance, here refers to the number of parks the place has one, two and three. So these are all value holding column entries. All right, so number holding column entries because I'm not getting into alphabet ones at this point in time because then you have to convert them in the form of numbers and then do the representation. That will get a little complex right now. These are all number-based entries, that is they are matrix in itself. So if you have to understand how some of the columns by itself might be redundant in nature, right? So for instance, if, if you take the two columns together, the third column would be the final output in itself. So if you have to understand relationship between the columns in the data entries, homogeneous systems are of importance because they help you equate the matrix with a zero. And then when you have a matrix equated with a zero, it becomes easier to move your variables from the left-hand side equation to the right-hand side equation without worrying what the value is here on the right-hand side because it was just a zero. So you wouldn't be changing anything significant, right? And to do that, you represent your columns in the form of parametric form of, of the equation. So these are the two concepts we're going to be studying in this session and they are important, quite important tool in data science when you have a problem statement that you have to solve. So let's understand it first. A system of linear equations which is in the form of Ax equals zero is called homogeneous. So if a homogeneous system has a solution that is your x equals zero, it is called as a trivial solution. And if x is a non-zero entry, then it is called as a non-trivial solution. So let us take an example here for representing a vector in the form of parametric equation in case of homogeneous system. That is, you're going to be equating this matrix with a zero entry on the right hand side. So this is the matrix here, 1, 1, 0, minus 8, minus 7 in my first row, 0, 1, 4, 3 in my second row, and all the zeros in my third row. Note that this matrix is already in the form of row reduced equal form. That's the first important step that you're supposed to see when you have the information. When you have, when you are applying this in some data set, in some data science problem, machine learning problem, you do the normalization of the data set, which is pretty much the same thing. So that's your first step just to check if the matrix is in row reduced equal form. If you don't know what is a row reduced equal form, I will link the URL to that video in my description box. But just a quick note on what it is. So all the entries, like the pivot entries, and the pivot entries are the ones that is the first entry in your row, should be on the right-hand side in the adjacent row. So this is here, this one's on the right-hand side. All the zero, all the last row entries should be zero. And then the values above and below the pivot in the pivotal column should be zeros. This is zero, zero, this is zero, zero, and then this is all zero. So this is a row reduced equal form matrix. And if you have to study this in detail, feel free to go and check that video, which is in the description box. So if I have to write this in the form of linear systems of equation, this becomes x1 plus zero x2. This is minus eight x3 minus seven x4. This is equated with a zero. And then here you have a zero. This is x2 plus 4x3 plus 3x4. And this is equated with a zero. You don't have anything else. So this is the linear system of representation for this matrix. 
Now, if I have to write this in the form of parametric forms, I have to find the number of columns because each column represents a different identity or a different data set in itself when this will be applied to a problem. So we have four columns here, one, two, three, and four. So my x1, pretty much that I can get it from here is 8x3 plus 7x4. My x2 is minus 4x3 minus 3x4. x3 is nothing with just one x3 value and x4 will be just x4 with nothing there because you don't have any other entries here. Now, if this has to be broken down in the form of column spans, this becomes x equals x1, x2, x3, x4. And then can I write this as 8 minus 4, 1 and 0? I've taken out the x3 from this column and this, this can be written as 7 minus 3, 0 and 1, taken x4 outside. So you see, when I have represented this value in the form of parametric equations, now I know what is the relationship between x1 and x3 and x4, x2 and x3 and x4, the relationship between those column entries are important. And then I'm also able to span them across these columns, put any kind of scalar values for x3 and x4, but I know that the values will be a subset of these vector spans. So that is the importance of understanding parametric form of equations and homogeneous systems. So now this vector equation is called parametric vector form of the solution set we've already discussed. And we've discussed since x3 and x4 are allowed to be anything, literally any values you can put in here. This says that the solution set is the set of all linear combinations of 8, minus 4, 1, 0, and 7, minus 3, 0, and 1. So now you see I've got some direct values across which I'm spanning the whole vector space. That means I can sort of get a visual picture of what exactly this information contains or at least the subset of the information this will contain, which I can, you know, apply to some, some function, some transformation function from Python or let's say if I'm using some other R or I'm using, you know, even Java for that matter. Whatever framework I'm using, when I know what I'm spanning my information across, the subset of information, the, the pieces starts to make sense, you know. Direct data wouldn't make any sense, but if you put them in the form of matrix, understand what math you've applied in the first place, understand the logic of it, things start to make a lot more sense, you know. You might have read about um, cases where you have the information and someone's actually equated the data set with a zero entry, or maybe you don't even know because, you know, those packages are so well <clears throat> packed and the frameworks are so well packed in itself that you don't know many of the things that you're doing in the first place but you just know why you're doing that that's it so you know that you're supposed to equate or normalize a data set but you don't know the importance of normalizing it mathematically you know from the core structure in some some blog someone's written they might have given one liner that you know you're normalizing it to just reduce the noise and to make sure that it's in the valid range of data set that you can you know use with R or Python, but you still don't know why when you're using that with R or Python, what is the math behind it? You know, you have to really understand, get down to why a programming language or a programming stack is doing or asking you to do something. Why? You know, what is the math? Why is that even necessary to do it? What, how is it coded? You know, because programming frameworks are also coded in some language and some math and some structures. So if you don't understand the math, I'm I'm stressing this fact so much, you know, and I know the things are going a little slow from my end, but understanding the math is really important. Without that, you can just be a theoretical AI engineer or a theoretical data scientist. You might be able to apply it to some basic problems, write a few blogs here and there, probably showcase how awesome you are, but that's not what we are. We see the math, we see what is intuitively happening. And then probably if we can even refine it further, so maybe, you know, we can go ahead and upgrade packages and frameworks in R language, Python language, C language, because we know the math, right? That is why it is important. So <clears throat> all these concepts are important. Now, you might be wondering why we've discussed homogeneous systems, because it's not that intuitive equating it with zero. What's the big deal? The big deal here is that when you're equating your data set with a zero, you need to first understand what kind of a data set 
you're supposed to be equating it with a zero, right? You can't just take any piece of information that has been given and equate it with zero and then try finding a parametric equation and then see where this column entry spans. And when it does spans, if I were had to apply this to a data science problem, you might get incorrect relationships between different column entries. And then, you know, you've messed up the complete, complete understanding. So getting the basics first is important. And now you know why you have to study homogeneous systems and take the time out to understand parametric forms of the equations. And now when we will apply this understanding to a real world data science, it will really, really come handy. So just stick around for that. All right. Let us take another example now. This is a case when, where we do not have a matrix in the row reduced equivalent form, as you can see. So I brought the matrix in the row reduced equivalent form. Just in case if you guys are not sure how I brought this matrix in row reduced equivalent form, I can put another video with steps, but it's very basic. What I did was I multiplied the first row with two and then you subtracted the entire thing with the second row to give me zero entries here. All right, but in case again, if you want a more detailed video on how this matrix is brought into row reduced equivalent form, just feel free to let me know. I can always do it on a paper pen and then share it with you guys in the comment section. So, or else I've already explained how this is done. And if you're not sure what row reduced equivalent concept is altogether, then feel free to watch my previous video where I described this. And I will link the URL in the description box for that video. So now if I have to break this down, this becomes x1 equals 3x2 and this is no entry, so x2 equals x2. So if I have to span this across the columns, I have two columns here, x1, x2. You take out the x2 here, this becomes 3 and this becomes 1. So then this, this matrix spans across the column entries 3 and 1 and you can take any scalar values. So that's pretty much it for this session. We've discussed what a homogeneous system is. That is ax equals zero when we are equating the left hand side with a zero value we've seen what a parametric form of equation is we've also tried understanding what is its importance is though not completely because we haven't actually applied it to a data science problem yet but when we do that it will become more intuitive at this point i'll shut down this session stating that well i hope we've understood what a homogeneous system is what a parametric form of equation is and why we should be knowing these two concepts okay so in case if you have any questions feel free to get in touch to me through the comment section or through my website and thank you so much